Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Palestinians protest U.S. UNRWA agreement for undermining right to return. U.S. judge orders indigenous Ecuadorians to pay Chevron Corporation's legal fees. Venezuela reopens borders with Colombia two years after U.S.-backed coup attempt. And Filipino social movements denounce presidential bid by son of former dictator. In our first story, a protest was held outside the United Nations Relief and Works Agency in besieged Gaza on October the 5th. Palestinians gathered to denounce the framework for cooperation signed between the United Nations and the United States. Protesters argued that the two-year plan would violate Palestinians' right to return. The U.S. resumed its funding for the UNRWA this year after it was cut by the Trump administration. The framework was signed in July, after which the U.S. paid additional funds worth nearly $136 million. However, the agreement imposes conditions on the funding. UNRWA must ensure that no U.S. funds are being given to Palestinian refugees receiving military training. This extends to members of the Palestine Liberation Army and other guerrilla resistance groups. It also calls for the monitoring of the curriculum in Palestinian schools. Palestinians have argued that the framework violates international law and the United Nations' own covenants. The Palestine Return Center has said that the U.S. demands seek to liquidate the Palestinian refugee costs. The Joint Refugee Committee has said that the agency will be transformed into a security agent implementing American Zionist dictates. UNRWA will reportedly be even required to send reports of its work to the United States State Department. In the latest shocking update in the Chevron pollution case, indigenous Ecuadorians have been ordered to pay the corporation's legal fees. U.S. Judge Louis A. Kaplan has approved a 2018 motion filed by the company. The Amazon Defense Coalition and Ecuadorian lawyer Pablo Fajarda Mendoza, among others, have been named. Kaplan has ordered them to pay close to $400,000 U.S. dollars. The judgment followed soon after Stephen Donziger was sentenced to six months in prison. He was charged with contempt of court in 2018 by Kaplan himself. Don Ziger had represented 30,000 indigenous people in a toxic waste case against Chevron. Ecuador's Supreme Court ordered the company to pay $9.5 billion as compensation. Chevron refused to pay and began a decade-long legal attack against the judgment and Don Ziger that cost them over a billion dollars by their own estimates. In 2014, Judge Kaplan ruled that the Ecuadorian judgment was unenforceable holding Don Ziger guilty of bribery, racketeering, coercion, and money laundering. He later ordered Don Ziger to hand over his electronic devices during an appeals process. After he refused, Kaplan charged him with contempt of court in 2018. Presiding Judge Loretta Preska placed Don Ziger under house arrest. In 2019, a private firm which had closely worked with Chevron was appointed to prosecute him. After 787 days under house arrest, Don Zinger was sentenced to prison on October the 1st. He has filed an appeal against the verdict and is awaiting a decision. In our next story, we take a look at Venezuela, which has reopened its border with Colombia after two years. Two large containers blocking the Simon Bolivar Bridge were removed this week. Trade resumed between both countries on Tuesday through the border in Tachira. This will benefit local communities and allow passage of commercial and humanitarian supplies. Venezuela severed diplomatic ties with Colombia in 2019 amid the attempted coup. At the same time, right-wing Colombian President Ivan Duque recognized Juan Guaido as the de facto leader. Venezuela closed its borders, citing interventionist threats by the U.S. through Colombia. Colombia unilaterally reopened its borders in June 2021. However, due to the COVID pandemic, Venezuela called for a controlled opening. The government has said that it has been vaccinating people in the border area for a month, regardless of the country. Vice President Delcy Rodriguez has urged Colombia to focus on cooperation. She further added that while the border between the two countries is shared, the responsibility is differentiated. <laughs> 
Venezuela has repeatedly warned of the infiltration of Colombian armed groups and traffickers into its territory. In our final story, we take a look at the Philippines where social movements have denounced the presidential bid of Ferdinand Marcos Jr. He is the son of former dictator Ferdinand Marcos who was in power for over 20 years. His rule included nearly a decade of martial law, political repression, and human rights violations. Rights groups documented at least over 3,257 extrajudicial killings. There were over 35,000 instances of documented torture and 70,000 political imprisonments. Mass protests marking 49 years since the declaration of martial law were held last month where activists called on people to reject candidates who would bring back the Marcos era. The campaign against the return of the Marcoses and martial law, or karma, have rejected Marcos Jr.'s candidacy. It has called it a brazen show of disregard for thousands of people who were killed, tortured, and disappeared by the dictatorship. Other rights groups have pointed to the regime's use of punitive violence, illegal arrests, and other crimes. Marcos Jr. will stand as the candidate for Partido Federal in Pilipinas. Opinion polls show that Marcos Jr. is the second most preferred candidate, slightly ahead of centrist and progressive candidates in the 2022 elections. Incumbent President Duterte cannot legally seek a second term and has announced his withdrawal from active politics just last week. That's all for today. Visit our website www.peoplesdispatch.org, subscribe to our YouTube channel for more stories, and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you.